I want to see this. Ready? Yeah. What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna show the overview of the entire controller and motor system. I know the battery was already covered in the previous uh, video. I was kind of processing some footage, deciding how to approach putting this out, and I think I'm gonna put it into two installments. And so for this one, I'm gonna do a broad overview of all of it, um, showing the connections, showing the operation and all that sort of stuff. And then I'm gonna do another video later this week where I, as I'm, it's gonna take longer, so I'm gonna process this in the meantime, but showing all the details, the troubleshooting, uh, time lapses of the build from effectively start to finish at this point. I'll exclude anything battery related since that was in the last video. You can check that out if you're interested in a headway module build, um, high output, that kind of thing. So we'll go ahead and just do the walkthrough of everything here. It's pretty detailed explanations, but it's all in the completed form. Uh, and so you won't see any of the build up to that point. But I think it'll make most sense to split it up, get one out quicker, so you guys get the update. I had people asking uh, in the Facebook group if this was ready to go, and so I'll put the update out. It shows the motors turning, you know, all of the operations. And then I'll do the full build with sometimes me struggling to figure things out, um, some behind the scenes of thought processes and like the problems that I'm facing, not just the successes, I'll do that one. It's, it's a little bit more lengthy, I'll do that one uh, following up with this. So we'll get onto that overview and I'll catch you guys in that video. Just wanna say before we get talking about anything, that this cart is as of five minutes ago, finally roadworthy for the first runs. There are things that are tacked and you know, all those sorts of things, but it will drive and the wheels will turn and it's controlled by a throttle and has a steering wheel, all the things that it needs to do to run effectively. So I'm gonna walk you through Primarily just the controller setup. I know that motors are easy. You plug them in, you connect the phase wires, batteries we already covered. The only thing that's really pending in terms of the big three is the controller assembly, setup, and programming. So I wanna run through those things with you real quick. Um, first, let me turn this around and give you guys a walkthrough of the setup as we have it so you can see, once we discuss this, what the outcome is in terms of how this works in here. So I didn't realize when I first started putting this together that there were a lot of things needed to go through 96 volt with a switch. So I ended up having to run secondary switches for the display and for the controllers, which needed 96 volt power outside of their normal battery connection. Um, so the way that it's set up right now, turn this key switch that opens the contactors um, that activates the 12 volt system, which we've got a gear selector here for. If I want to turn the display on, I've got to flip a second switch. This will eventually go through the key switch. But with the giant glare reflection, you can't really see that is turned on. And then I also have to turn on the controller power switch right here, which was already on, but we'll flip it again. You can, you can hear it beep right there. So with these controllers, I mean, we just, I don't know, you can see that better now with the glare being in the background. We're in drive. We can see that this. Turns as expected. Uh, my initial programming is complete. The more complete, probably the more complicated part in general is dealing with these harnesses. So I opted for the method of snipping and creating my own connectors rather than dealing with repinning the main six pin and nine pin plugs. You can see there are a couple of things left in each of them. But I did remove whatever else that I wanted. So let me walk you through some of these. Notice because I have two controllers run in parallel and everything, there are certain things such as in this case, the signal to the gear selector, which is those two. I can, I've, I'll share a file in the folder that I, I always make a folder for each of the controllers that I upload to a Google Drive. I'll share a link that will have a file for each of the pinnings. So I won't kind of show you how, like the colors and locations of each of these. But what I did is just snipped out the two, which I believe it was these top two that became these from both of the controllers, ran them in parallel, put them through a two pin connector that I pinned and ran those to the gear selector. It's just two wires required for that. That selector specifically also has a power wire on it. So if you want to see the pinning of this, there's a positive and a negative. And then you just run the signal switch that connects to ground through the connector here. So you connect it back to, and there's obviously in that same folder a pinning diagram of this, but you just need to connect each of them to ground. 
and I have a little ground and positive 12 volt terminal thing up there that I can just run straight down into that little manifold and it solves the problem. So that's for the gear selector, just two wires out of the controller. Power also supplied to the selector. You could just run it through a regular switch that didn't have lights and selectors and things like that. This one's kind of, it's like a $10, it's a really good option actually. It's pretty common in cheap electric vehicles, but it's $10 option from AliExpress. And it has a color that designates which gear is active as well as the arrow. So that's for the gear selector. This is my CAN sensors. I have it snipped off because I ended up realizing I only should connect it to one. I shouldn't confuse the signals and have this connected to both. So one of my controllers is giving the signal for the RPM reading on that, which I might have issues with. I've got to assess this. Some of the functionality is limited in the app version of programming. I haven't yet plugged it into a computer to try to diagnose that. But as of now, it's not reading the RPM correctly. This is the throttle here. Again, I wanted one throttle to control both, so I connected it to both, so I snipped out the green for signal, um, red and white for, is this green and white? Yeah, so green and white for signal, red and white for positive, which is uh, positive from the controller that goes to the red cable here. It's, it's like a five volt positive. And then a ground for black, so that throttle runs. That is easy. Um, just connect up colors actually match pretty well on this one so you'll see that and that's running through a three pin that I made everything obviously just runs through here up to the front which then splits off into the throttle display or gear switch and lastly I did tap a 12 volt lead off of here through the controller which I can use for something if I would like to this is a 12 volt supply not a 12 volt input to output just so you're aware on the controller it says 12 volt these ones here actually are output the one thing that's required to run is this key switch, which goes through 12 volt, like I said, so I put a single pin on that, and then I have to throw that switch down there manually for now. Again, that's gonna run. I'm gonna redesign this when I do the second build to have a 96 volt constant, 96 volt through a switch, and then 12 volt. Um, so this is required. If you want this controller to turn on, all you gotta do is connect the orange one to a key. When you power that on, it powers the controller and connect this to the throttle. That is all that's required and it will turn. If you want to have sensors, put those on. Uh, you can program it to be drive default and you can actually change gears in the app, which is super inconvenient. So I found obviously that it helps to as well put a gear selector on there. That's what we did there. For programming, so obviously the first thing you have to do always is scan for devices. I'm hooked up to one control right now, but I programmed them to be identical. I wanted their voltages and everything on the throttle output and their throttle input speed and things of that sort to be all the same. So I made them identical. So this is just one of them, but we are now connected. We can go to the parameters on the bottom and I'll just briefly show you what some of them are, what some of them do. Um, actually, this should have been changed. I didn't change this on this one yet. Temperature sensor doesn't allow you to select the right one. The QS motor guy, I'm <laughs> looking at my nasty hands. I was just putting chains on. <laughs> Um, QS motors recommended to put PTC as the temperature sensor. It was on their website when we purchased it, identified as a, I think, KTY83-122. That one's not selectable. You'll notice, you click it, it doesn't change. So PTC has the same output reading they told me. Um, this is all by auto learning. I did up the amps to 450 for battery amps and phase amps are 850. Um, didn't change some of the other stuff. I like to see all of the parameters, obviously, so I hit expert. I changed the throttle response to line. I could turn this to sport on both of them. I don't expect that it changes how much power is output. I think it just changes how quickly it puts the power down related to your throttle openness. So I don't want it to hit too hard. It actually ex seems to bite really early still. I'm going to leave it at line for now. You just had very little, it was like this would go from no throttle to like half throttle. And I'd rather have it be no throttle to half throttle to full throttle. So I'm leaving it line for now. It seemed to respond the way that I wanted it to. Um, you can auto learn these and it'll tell you where you're at for the most part, but you can also just check what your throttle resting voltage is and what your throttle max voltage is. So I made sure that I wanted it to be close to resting so that it would bite early. So I put it at one. I didn't want to go too close so that it wouldn't turn off. When I auto learned the first time, it actually continued to spin because it was below I think it was 0.7, and so it was below the value of the like the signal output voltage, and so it read it as always being pressed a little bit. So I changed that. 
I made sure these two things match between the two controllers. That one I saw is pretty important. Um, ratios and speed, this is the output power based on the speed of the motor. Obviously it ramps down a lot like the a APT controller did. I wanted as much power throughout the ranks as I could, so I left it at 100. It was actually, I bumped these up. There's a limit. This is the max settings that you can go. I did, actually you can put 7,000 up to 25, but 7,000 is like 120 miles an hour. I don't want any field weakening. I don't think we'll need to go faster than that. So I put these down to the minimum as of now. I don't think they go to zero. Let me just check. I'm doing this by watching the screen, so it's actually kind of weird to see if zero is level. It's not. So that's the minimum on those ones. I just wanted as little as possible. At 5,800 RPM, we're at about 100 miles an hour. So I don't want it to go much past that. Um, and so I'll, I left these up. We might turn those last ones down. Really, we just need to go to 6,000, but we'll see. Um, the drive selector on here actually defaults to middle. So what I did was turned these up to 100. They started at like 50 and 75, I think were the two percentages, but I wanted full power in middle gear, which is drive. And then I limited the speed to 6,000. Like I said, again, that's like 105, 110 miles an hour, somewhere in there. So I left that there. I might lift that, lower it, I don't know. Uh, interestingly with these controllers, what it does is when it hits 6,000, it actually, if you're hitting it hard, it'll bypass it by 1,000 or more, and then it'll ramp back down and then bring the power back up to get you there. And it'll keep doing if you hit it too fast. So I might lift it a little higher so it doesn't actually hit the limiter because it seems to cause little issues with the way that it reads. These ones are your regen values. I believe this is as high as they go. It didn't seem like regen was aggressive enough to me. Maybe I can change these on the computer. But what's weird about this software is it doesn't actually lower it to the max. It makes you guess what the max is. And they recommended keeping it at about a 1.5 ratio. So I'm pushing it by bringing this to six. This one is supposed to be lower than this one. So if I can raise this one on a computer app, I'll change this. But for now, we're just going to test write it as is. Um, I want this to be more aggressive. Or BLE, that's what they call the Bluetooth um, dongles. So I might plug into a computer and bypass that and see if that works. Um, I wanted it to default to neutral, which it does. And then I can use the gear selector to change that over. And then I wanted to electronic brake when the throttle was released. And so that's how that's set up. I don't have it a regen brake attached to a switch, I want it to regen on release. And so that's the, what you'll change the follow to this. You could also have it when the brake is valid. So if you, if you plugged in either to the brake low or the brake high to a 12 volt signal through a switch, when you hit the switch, it would this would be the one that you choose for that. This is the one just to have release. And I'm not sure if you can do both. I have no need to, so I haven't dug into if one of these other settings, like the brake for um, park two, if any of those can be used to be a second type of electric brake. But I haven't needed to. Um, this display stuff is one that I have to work out. You'll notice that I can't change some of these settings. So we'll get to that when I dig into this a little bit more. Voltage parameters, that's pretty easy. You've got a 116 volt battery, which this doesn't actually control charge on in any way. It discharges all that it controls. So the only thing that's really important is a low voltage cutoff here. So I did that. Temperature stuff, I didn't change any of those. And then PID, I can't change many of these that I need to. I can change that one, but I can't change some of these. These always have to be done in ratios. I can't change some of those. This is not the most aggressive setting. I may be able to increase acceleration on this by dropping some of those values down in proportion. And I'll have a file up that shows you some of the standard ratios between those numbers and you can just pick whichever one you want. It tells you like size of motor and then the numbers to put. I can't change the ones that I need to to get this as, as much acceleration as possible out of these controllers. I'm gonna test drive it as is. If I don't like any of the behaviors of this cart after all that's done, I'm gonna plug it into my computer and do another finer programming with a different app that might not lock me out of all these parameters. That's my hope. But, there's the cart as you say, we got a new steering wheel. I do have to still put tension in these chains. They are applied, but they are not super tight yet. And you can do that by just raising the motors up. I made everything in slots so it can move. Uh, I'm going to put you guys in the tripod so we can see this move. And I'm curious, I can't actually push the throttle and watch it. So I'll watch the replay of this after I take it to see like how much slot there is in this when they spin. Set you like that. You can see both kind of. Okay, here we go. 
All right, I can't watch that and comment on that until I stop the video. So there we have it. We're pulling it off the stand tonight and then we'll take it for a spin. It may be dark at that point, so probably not very good footage, but I'll probably secretly test it before Inja like says, first ride. <laughs> I do that sometimes. So don't let that secret get out. That's just between me and the 2,400 of you that are subscribed. <laughs> anyway, so we'll sign out there for now. Um, and then, I mean, next videos, maybe I'll toss a short in or a live or some other not normal style of content. Maybe I'll throw one of those up and, you know, we'll do a quick review, quick tease, something of that sort. But I mean, as you can see, it will drive. The wheels do turn and it has a steering wheel and it's something to sit on. So it's at that stage. I'm not going to crank it hard. We're not going to do any of that. We've got to still put a racing harness in it and things of that sort. But the cart works. It's not done by any stretch. And obviously all of the beautification, building a body, which is going to look really cool, actually. It's going to be, you know... The Lambo's not out there, but it's gonna be styled in a similar vein of that. Maybe throw a quick drag race against the Lamborghini. See so if a custom built, fairly cheap. I mean, there are plenty of builds that have gone over this. I'd say that we're probably about all in, it'll be a five to six grand cart. Um, see if with that much money and a bunch of bad ideas and little concern for our well-being if we can end up beating a Lambo up to a certain value. I mean, obviously this won't go 140, but the Lambo will get there easily. But maybe up to a certain point we can be a competitor. Maybe beat them by quite a bit. Who knows? Time will tell. But uh, we'll bring you guys along for all those fun parts that come after this. So till then, catch you in the next one. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Comment them. Just let me know what I can do, and I'll fill in any information, videos that I can, and all that sort of stuff. So, catch you then. Yeah, let's see it. All right. I can't not smile. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Wow. You did some good work.